Spirituality is that which gives us the strength to go on, for it is the assurance that God is in the struggle. Spirituality spells out our connectedness to God, our human roots, the rest of nature, one another, and ourselves. In this way, in 1994, the Third World Theologians redefined spirituality and began our thinking on right relationships. In seven vignettes, we will explore what we can learn from Mary about these right relationships. Today, we reflect on Mary in right relationship with herself. The poet Anne Johnson, in her book, Miriam of Nazareth, imagines other Magnificats which are spoken by Mary. I read one for you which reflects Mary in her own person. My soul reflects quietly on your fullness, and my spirit grows stronger in the hope of your promise, God, my Redeemer, because you have filled me with the knowing that you are alive within me. Yes, day by day through the course of time, my awareness of the call to blessed fulfillment increases, for you have done great things for me. Holy is this time, and patience is your gift to all who nurture the seed of your love. You have changed my life. I was so confident and unknowing. You have spread before me your vision of fragile simplicity. My longing to be a healing and reconciling person to your people is affirmed within the daily comings and goings of my life. There are several beautiful passages in the Gospels in which we get an understanding of Mary's sense of self. At the Annunciation, we see Mary's poignant inner turmoil in the face of an awesome task being asked of her. She was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Mary then asks outright the question, how can this be, since I am a virgin? This young woman seems to know the enormity of what she is being asked to do and wants to be certain that she understands enough to give a reasoned answer. In the words of Pope Paul VI, Mary, taken into dialogue with God, gives her active and responsible consent. Her first action after this traumatic moment is to respond to the other news that Gabriel has given her about her older cousin Elizabeth's pregnancy. In the way of women who care for one another, she goes to visit Elizabeth. There, the two women rejoice in each other's presence and each one, in her own way, gives praise to God for what is happening. Elizabeth gives Mary a threefold greeting. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The older Elizabeth blesses the younger Mary, herself first, then her child yet to be born, and then Mary's faith. Mary, strengthened by these blessings, and with the wisdom and courage of her youth, can say, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. After Mary gives birth to Jesus, and the shepherds have visited them in Bethlehem, telling stories of how the angel had spoken to them, we are told, Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. When Mary and Joseph take Jesus to the temple, to do for him what was customary under the law, they have conversations with Simeon and Anna. 
Simeon tells Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. What does Mary make of this? Does she know that when she named herself as servant of the Lord at the Annunciation, that she was prophetic about the suffering that comes with being a servant? When Jesus is 12 years old and goes with Mary and Joseph to the temple for Passover, he remains behind to speak with the elders there. When Mary and Joseph realize that he is not with them, they return to find him in the temple. Mary says to him, as any mother would, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. When Jesus says, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? They do not understand what he means. However, Jesus returns to Nazareth and is obedient to them. And Luke tells us, his mother treasured all these things in her heart. This ordinary Jewish peasant woman lived a rich and varied life. But her life was like the life of so many women today, a mix of joy and pain, a mix of the known and the unknown, Life in a land dominated by a foreign power. Life at a time of violence and war. The struggle of raising a child. The anxiety about what her child will do with his life. The loss of a husband and then of an only son in a terrible death. These are not unique or special struggles. They are the struggles of ordinary life for so many women today. Mary's soul was pierced by suffering as so many of us experience. Mary pondered the possibilities of an unknown future as many of us do. Mary treasured many moments in her life holding them close to her heart when she needed the strength to go on. We repeat the words of Anne Johnson's Magnificat and make them not only Mary's, but our own. My soul reflects quietly on your fullness and my spirit grows stronger in the hope of your promise, God, my Redeemer. Holy is this time and patience is your gift to all who nurture the seed of your love.